Mint in the box. I haven't said that in a long time. This is, as you can tell from Ilg. This was a gift from Emerson Colley. Um, a couple years ago, in fact, and only got around now to doing anything with it. By Mint, it was never used at all. I mean, we were the first ones to... Or actually, Emerson was the first one to open the box. Um, it's a Model 83. I mean, even it has some water stains on it. The box is in good shape otherwise. And on top, with the original um, address, this is probably mid-1950s. Even has the original packing material, which is this uh, wood wool. Not only do we have the fan, Mint in the box. We also, oh, let me before I get to the next part, we have um, this is in with the fan. Nothing in the envelope that was attached to the fan, but didn't write the date on it, but every, all the other information. So somebody hand wrote this, you know, about 60 some years ago. There is a copyright date on the envelope from 1946. And if you flip it around. Yeah, it doesn't have the instructions, but it has this on. I don't know what where the instructions went. And the tag on it. And this is the box for the um, shutters that go with it. Also mint in the box, never used. And. Westinghouse Electric Supply Company. So what did we do? It's up there. Uh, we used to have a window in there, obviously, but due to the grid ceiling right there, it was unusable in terms of ventilation, and it was were actually broken the latch was broken so it couldn't be opened a um, little bit of wind it's very windy outside so it's blowing in here um, and we thought this would be a perfect place to do it I actually ran the electrical for it about two years ago in fact it's off right now uh, obviously I, keep, I don't know why I'm saying that but anyhow what, what, I'll explain what I did when I go outside to show the shutters and before I continue, I know I'm going to get a comment on this, because I've been getting comments from select people. Um, when we got the new HVAC system in 2014, we went from a two-ton, which was undersized for the house, to a three-ton unit, as we can see here we had in the one video. The issue being, this is, does a much better job. The old system only gets to about 20 to 23 degrees below ambient, like 53 degrees out the vents. This new system gets uh, an amazing 30 plus degrees below ambient, like 32 degrees below ambient. Uh, for thermostat set for 72, the temperature out the pipes is 40 degrees. And sometimes we don't have the garage, um, leave the garage door open in the summer while we're working, and the garage is not climate controlled. Um, while the old ductwork did have insulation on it, it did not have a vapor barrier, as you can see here. It just had bare insul fabulous insulation wrapped around it with like uh, like a surgical wrap type thing. Um, and it would work fine for a day, but after a day it would start to pull inside the insulation and start dripping back out, and that's what kept happening. So that explains what happened there. Now it's completely fixed proper um, uh, duct wrap with a vapor barrier on it. So what we ended up doing we got uh, duct wrap with the mylar vapor barrier 
and we did a test run when it was 87 degrees of high humidity and no problems. That's all it was. I have to replace the tiles. I'm going to um, try to um, we're going to try uh, spray painting like uh, flat white on there. See if that works. If it looks like crap, we'll just replace the tiles themselves. And then I'm going to paint the grid. So that's the plan there. See so yeah, how the duct works wrap. That's what that's all about. I'm going to have to make this quick because it's raining and cold. But this is the exterior installation. In fact, I'm going to get up to it. So this is what the shutter looks like. And you can see the fan on the inside. Spin it away. So basically what we did, we took two pieces of plywood. This one's larger. The one inside, we reused the aluminum window frame. And the other one's smaller, sits in the window frame. And it bolts together with the toggle bolts in the corners. And it's caulked around it. And it's uh, completely sealed. So that's how we did that. So we took a non-usable window and made something useful out of it. The uh, garage door has its own windows, which provides enough natural light, no more so than the window. And we painted it black, per Harley's suggestion. Uh, so it would look like a closed window and it wouldn't stand out when you're outside. Uh, if you painted it white or something, it would stand out too much. Example, it kind of looks like a closed window, providing there's no window uh, treatments behind it. Uh, as you can see, so it looks pretty cool from out here. The other thing we did was we upgraded our little control panel here. And uh, we did add pilot lamps on it, as you can see. This is actually the switch here that controls the fan. We're going to actually replace this wall plate with a white one to match this. Um, that was just all we had on hand at the time. But the heater, which is currently running, has the red one pilot lamp. And when the fan's on, it'll have the blue one. But it, it works. It's not a typical power switch, and I'll show that in a second. We got this thing right here. Harley found on eBay. Um, it doesn't have an off position. It just has on and time. It's a timer off delay for like a bathroom fan, but it can control anything else, really. Um, and it has a little potentiometer. You can vary from one minute to 60 minutes. We have it set for 15 minutes. And uh, box right here. These, these typically go for like 80 bucks and we got it off eBay for I think 15. It's mint, never used. And the whole purpose for this fan is not so much for uh, cooling, but for um, like a bath fan, for ventilating, uh, fumes, uh, solder fumes, anything like that. We, and we want to run it during the winter. This puts a really good positive, or sorry, negative pressure on the garage and everything just gets sucked out through the fan here. And um, I'm not quite done with everything here yet because like later this year or some, uh, I just did this with the wiring. Um, it looks really good, but I'm gonna put it in conduit going up to the ceiling as well at some later point. So for now, this is what we ended up with. Now, as you saw from the box, it's a fan and light switch. Well, light is not on a timer. So it's, if you have the switch on, the blue light lights. Turn the switch off. It doesn't actually um, turn off the fan. Like I said, you'll hear a quick blip in the power while it switches over to a timed relay. You hear it go click. And it'll run for, we have it set for 15 minutes then shut off. But while it's in the off position, even though the fan's still running, this pilot light's out to indicate it's off. So that's how that works. So right now we're gonna do the um, mandatory uh, fan startup. So Harley, go ahead and flip the switch. Runs at 1500 RPM. But you can hear how quiet it is. have the fan itself isolated from the wood with some grommets on each side so it's it's not actually resting on the wood itself. It has some vibration dampening. The fan is perfectly balanced and it 
actually moves a lot of air. Uh, again, that puts a nice negative pressure on the garage. And as you see, I ran MC cable to go up there into the junction box. Okay. And also painted it black on the inside. And yes, I gave you credit. As you can see, you have the blue pilot lamp on, when the fan's running. If we flip it off and listen closely, you're going to hear this click, that light go out, but the fan keeps running. So watch this. Okay then. Mail has arrived. <laughs> um... I lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, we'll listen closely. You hear that? That was that clicking, but the fan still runs on a timer off delay for approximately 15 minutes against a potentiometer. So, we like example, we do it, we got to go to bed, we flip the switch, and the fan will run for 15 minutes afterwards. So, it's a pretty convenient feature. And uh, I'm not going to wait around 15 minutes, but I'll just flip it back on. Yep, see it, the relay dropped out, but the switch contacts itself turned this pilot lamp back on. Now, this garage is pretty sealed off from the rest of the house. Again, we're working to finish up some other details. This door right here has a bit, quite a bit of pressure on it. Um, get to about right there. And it's pushing it but like this whole door like here if I let go it just sucks it shut and it's not a lot of air but it's you know pretty powerful enough you know it's, it's just enough like like a bath fan you know it's perfect the best example though practical example would be how much air does it pull in from the outside and this would be a good example here like a smell slot like right now you know, obviously you have a little bit of air leaking around it but you open it up Stuck the recently delivered mail in there. So, example, there's actually a ton of air being sucked in through here. Now, next question somebody's going to say is, why don't you put a makeup air vent in here? No, that's not the purpose. It does plant fine on its own. The whole purpose is we're going to be running it during the summer and winter when we don't want to suck in outside air at all. And uh, it's like I said, it's a, we're using it kind of like a bath fan negative pressure in here and not let fumes or anything get into the house or anything like that solder fumes whatever whatever we may be doing when we don't want to have this door open in the dead of winter when it's 10 degrees out or during the summer when it's 90 if 100 humidity you know we have it climate controlled over here so one more shot and this is the final product outside whether or not I can pick up the uh, blade inside. Yeah, it's a real nice clean install. Uh, before I wrap this video up, um, the only thing I had to do to the exterior shutters was uh, lubricate the um, hinge points on it so it would uh, easily open and close. Again, the whole thing was never used in the last 60 years. This is the first use it's ever seen. And you know, put some drops of oil on it, put oil in the motor, and it's perfectly fine. And it will be perfectly fine for decades to come. So, that's the ILG Model 83 from the mid-50s. Happily purring away up there. Doing an excellent job. So, thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe. Thank you.